Hi guys, right today we're having a look at a power supply in a fruit machine. Now the problem with this one is that the I suspect that the smoothing capacitors have degraded over time. This machine is uh, over 20 years old and uh, over time the capacitors, the electrolytic capacitors can dry out um, and this will result in the voltage not being smoothed as it should be. Um, so if we take a look at this machine, you might be able to see that there's a flickering on the lights. Now, it does depend on how much power is being drawn. So the more lights that are active, the worse the um, the, the ripple uh, is on the on the bulb. So you can see it. Let me just see on that when the jackpot one comes on there. You can see it's flickering, and. This can be seen in a lot of fruit machines uh, at this age, um, and the it's not it doesn't cause a big problem um, until the ripple gets too large that it can actually knock out the um, the board on the machine, uh, and I've seen that on this one. So um, when it's in use, uh, if it's paying out or um, all the lights are on, it wins the jackpot, for instance. Uh, sometimes it can reset the main board because the, the ripple is that much that the voltage drops below its operating voltage uh, and it will reset the board. Um, I'll just put some money in and this will show because the lights stay on when, uh, when the money's in. You can see the flickering there across all of those lights. So what we're going to do, uh, we're going to take out this power supply and take a look at these capacitors. Uh, I suspect um, with a machine this age, it'll be a linear power supply um, as opposed to a switch mode power supply. So um, the way they work is uh, you have a big transformer, big linear transformer, um, a rectifier to turn it into DC and then a big um, smoothing capacitor on there. So um, I'll get this open and we'll take a look. Okay, so this is inside the bottom of the machine. A little bit dark there, but we'll get this power supply out. Uh, and there's the supply in the bottom there. So uh, let me get this out and uh, we'll get it on the bench. Take a look. Okay, so here's the power supply out of the machine. Um, if we just take a look around it, uh, there's some weight in this. I mean, this is uh, it's a good five kilograms in weight, this power supply. Uh, and that is due to the fact that it's a linear power supply. So the, the bottom section here, all of this, this is the transformer, linear transformer. And there will be multiple voltage taps coming off this, um, this bottom winding up to the top. We have a look on the top of the supply. We can see what the output voltages are. Minus 12, plus 48 volts AC, plus 12, and plus 34 volts. So the, the the windings that are coming off this, the 48 volts AC, I expect to be um, untouched. They'll just come straight off the, the windings of the transformer and out to the machine. The 12 volts and the 34 volts will go through rectifiers. Um, now once that's happened, there will be a large uh, smoothing capacitor in here. Uh, which will then smooth that, and that is what I suspect is uh, is degraded on this. Uh, we'll get the top open now. So there's just two screws on the top of this power supply. Okay, so just have a look in there. Yeah, so it looks as though we've got a smoothing capacitor for each of the different voltages. So this one is 15,000 microfarad, 35 volt. So that will be the plus 34 volt supply. 
and then we have another one i can't read the label from this position i'll have to get that out but i suspect this next largest one is going to be the 12 volts 10 amp dc and then the last one i suspect is the minus 12 so there's three capacitors that i can see in there and the rectifiers will be those devices down behind the board that are um, screwed onto the metal so uh, let me get this out and uh, we'll have a good look at this so there's no easy way to get into this the uh, mainly it is screwed together but there is a rivet here which has been uh, put in a final assembly and that is stopping me getting to the front of this board inside um, the rectifiers are bolted in with nuts further down so I need to get to the front of this um, so I think what I need to do is drill out this rivet here take out the screw from the bottom and then this metal plate uh, should should bend out enough where I can uh, access the bolts on those rectifiers so uh, let me do that and I will come back So I don't think I need to take out this rivet. Um, I think what I can do, you can see down here, this is the, uh, the, the bolt is down there for the rectifier. I just need to try and get a little socket on there and you can see there's the one on the other side. So rather than bend this case out, I think I might be able to get a socket in there and take that board out. Okay, yeah, so I've just got a 7mm socket there, I'm just able to get that hooked onto the nut at the end of the bolt inside, and if I hold this still, I'll be able to uh, just use a screwdriver uh, and get the screw out on this side. Um, so let me do that now. Okay, that worked, um, I was able to get the board out of that method. Um, the, the wires are still a little bit tight, but uh, there's enough room there to, to get to these capacitors. Um, now looking at the tops of these, the telltale sign that the capacitor is, uh, or electrolytic capacitor is, um, is failing is that you get a bulge at the end of the can there. Now these, there is a slight bulge, but they don't look too bad. But due to the lack of other components in here, I think that uh, must be the, the issue with this machine. So you can see the two full wave rectifiers on the back there. And... The three capacitors and that'll be for the three DC rails that this outputs. So the large one is a 15,000 microfarad 35 volt. The other one is a 4,700 microfarad at 80 volts. And there's a small one down there. So let me have a look and see what capacitors I've got in stock. Okay, so the voltages on these, um, the voltage rails for these capacitors, the 35 volt 15,000 microfarad goes to the 12 volt DC output. The 4,700 microfarad 80 volt is for the plus 34 volts. DC rail and the last capacitor down here which is also a 4700 microfarad 16 volt capacitor that is for the minus 12 volt rail now I only have in stock this capacitor which is a 35 volt 22,000 microfarad now this will be fine to replace for the 15,000 microfarad. Um, a larger capacitance is fine as long as the voltage rating is the same or higher. Um, the, these capacitors, you know, capacitors can be used for timing uh, and, and other things, but in this function here, it's literally just a smoothing capacitor. So the larger capacitor, um, larger capacitance is going to be fine on that. So I'll put this 
22,000 microfarad capacitor in place of this one uh, and I'll have to order um, suitable replacements for those, I don't have those here but um, I'll get those ordered and um, as soon as I have them we will continue the video. So I've got the capacitors on solder from the board now. It's just worth noting this this board, um, if we look on the other side, this board has got the polarity marked for these capacitors with the plus. Um, electrolytic capacitors are directional, so they, they have um that they need to be the right way around. Um, if the markings aren't on the board, they usually are, but if they aren't before you unsolder it, it's worth uh, just making a note. Of, of where that polarity is, you know, put a little mark next to the plus or the minus so you know which one it is. It's also worth uh, having a look at this board because it's old, it's uh, 20 plus years old this board, just have a little look for dry joints, if any of the joints look as though they need uh, touching up with solder then now's a good time to do it. I've also cleaned off the heat sink compound from the back of these rectifiers, um, I'm going to put some new compound on when it goes back in. It's actually been a couple of weeks since the last time I was doing this video. Um, we needed to uh, order these replacement capacitors. So let me just show you what I've got. Original capacitors are on the left. So the um, three that we're replacing, the first one was a 15,000 microfarad with a working voltage of 35 volts. And I'm replacing that with a 22,000 microfarad capacitor with a working voltage of 35 volts. So, like I said before, the um, the higher capacitance on this will not matter in this um, particular uh, function because it's um, it's just being used as a smoothing capacitor. Then we have the 4,700 microfarad 80 volt capacitor, and that's being replaced with the same spec. And then the small one is a 1000 microfarad 25 volt capacitor and again replacing that with the same spec. So um, this is a, obviously a physically a large capacitor but I've checked on the board and there is uh, there is enough room to mount this on that board so everything should be fine. Um, I'll go ahead and fit these and then uh, we'll come back. All right so that's the capacitors soldered in. There they are. So the last thing to do with this power supply is screw this board back in. Now I've cleaned these up. These had uh, these are the um, the full wave rectifiers. They did have some compound on there, some old compound. So I've I've removed that, and I'm going to uh, just put some new compound on that I have here, just on the back of here, and then we'll bolt these back together, and uh, we should be ready for a test. Okay, it's all back together. I'm just going to take it and put it in back into the machine and see if the uh, the flickering has improved at all. Okay, new power supplies in. I've just powered it up, and it is much better. It 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 is still flickering a little bit. The camera's actually picking up that flicker. A bit more than what I can see, but uh, it is certainly a lot better. Yeah, I mean those ones there, that seven pound, I can't see that flickering by eye at all. It's uh, it's the camera and the shutter speed that's picking it up. So you'd have to take my word for it, but that is a lot better than it was before. So that is the end of this video. I uh, hope it's helped out. Um, the uh, the power supply in these is very simple. Um, you've just got the transformer, linear transformer, the regulator and the smoothing capacitors. So whatever fails in there, it's easy enough to uh, replace. So yeah, you'll have to take my word for it, but uh, I can see that that is uh, much improved from before. 
And uh, the main issue was that it was it was that bad that um, the voltage would drop enough to reset the board and reset the game um, in the middle of uh, using it. So I'm hoping that that, uh, that won't happen now. So thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a like.